please. Alderman Sorrentino. Here. Alderman Jacob. <clears throat> Unmute, Peter. Peter, you're muted. Sorry, here. Okay, Take Alderman. Peter butter off. Alderman Woods. <laughs> here. Alderman Sismarski. Here. Alderman Roy Wesley. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Alderman, Alderman Eugene Wesley. Eugene, you're muted also. I'm here. Okay, Alderman Catalano. Here. And Alderman Messina. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. I need a approval of the minutes of April 21st, 2020, public. So moved. Second. Any corrections? <laughs> no corrections. Um, let's have a roll call on that, please. No, you don't need a roll call. You don't need a roll call. All in favor. All in favor. Go ahead. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, next is a report and recommendation for approval of an agreement between the city of Wooddale and uh, contract uh, integration and upgrades to the city skater system in amount not to exceed $46,800. That is my motion. Second. Second. Any questions? I have one question. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's muted. You got to unmute yourself. You just muted now. <clears throat> Can oh. you hear me? Plug, You're plug the phone cord back in the wall, Eugene. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we hear Hi. you. So the SCADA system, what, what plant is that for? Chairman, this is Director Lang, if I could be recognized. Go ahead. Uh, this is located at the North Wastewater Treatment Plant, but it is used for all of our um, lift stations and water pumping stations also. It's, it's all kind of centrally held there at North Plant. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I, no, Go ahead. Uh, uh, Jacob. Uh, quick question. On the SCADA system, do we get any other quotes? Go ahead, Director Lane. Uh, we did not. Concentric Integration um, kind of hosts our system. They installed it originally. Um, you know, as far as um, the equipment goes, uh, maybe I'll defer to Director Case on some of that. Yeah. So for the uh, for the equipment, um, we're using the Scale Technologies, which is also the same equipment we have at City Hall, and that's going to provide us with the ability to actually sync back and forth um, data from City Hall to wastewater as kind of a disaster recovery scenario. Um, the Cardinal. So we'll have that ability, which is which is quite nice. So the, the, equipment is actually, the equipment was actually purchased under um, under last budget year. Um, we had it in the budget to, to upgrade the hardware itself, but I believe this project is also the replacement of many of the other um, SCADA um, Parts such as um, you know configurations, some of the dialers, uh, th things that are that need to be replaced that are older that aren't just uh, server equipment per se. Okay, I have one more question, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, as far as uh, the seven years, is that typically how long that system will last? Can I take that, Chairman? Yep. Yes. Go ahead. So um, we were lucky on seven years. Um, it probably should have been upgraded and replaced a little bit sooner, but uh, I'm sure most of you know that my, uh, the way I, I kind of handle things is uh, keep it alive as long as possible and spend as little money as we can until, um, until replacement is absolutely needed. So that, that's where we're at right now. Okay, thank you. Any other questions out there? No. And yep, okay, so roll call, please. Alderman Tarantino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Woods? 
Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Motion carries. Next is the, the approval of an agreement between the City of Wooddale and Compass Mineral of America, Inc. For the uh, fiscal year ending 2021, the bulk, the, the bulk rock salt contract in the amount not to exceed $84,375.20. That is my motion. Second. Good question. Any questions? Yep. Go ahead, Alderman. Uh, yeah, it's for uh, Director Lang. Go ahead. <clears throat> this is the uh, rock salt for the streets, correct? Yes, that is correct. What did, what did we what did we use last year? We obviously we had a light winter. We didn't use all of our budget last year, did we? Correct. Last year we used about 580 tons. Uh, we purchased um, about 594, which was 46 tons lower than uh, the minimum that we were required to purchase. So okay. Compass Minerals is going to hold that additional 46 tons on us at no additional cost uh, okay. to be delivered next year. That's why I wanted to know how much we had left over to if they were going to hold it or we got to pay for it. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Go, go ahead, Alderman uh, Wesley. So my question is, how, how much salt is this that we buying? Go ahead, Director. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we estimate that we're going to need around 800 tons. Now we're required to purchase at least 80% of that number, which is 640 tons. <laughs> But we have the capability to purchase up to 130%, which would be uh, slightly over 1,000 tons. So it's kind of a range, you know, given that we're not sure exactly how much we're going to need in any given year. It's very dependent on the weather and other factors. Any other question? How many tons? Yes, Tony, so, so Sunny here. How many tons does the 84,000 get us? I mean, 84,000, uh, sorry, Chairman. The 84,000 is for the 130% figure, which would be uh, 1,040 tons. Thank you. Any other questions? If there are none, we have a roll call, please. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. <clears throat> Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Motion carries. And last is approval of an agreement between the City of Wooddell and Brothers Asphalt Paving for the fiscal year ending 2021 and the Capitol Road Resurfacing Program in the amount not to exceed $570,028.49. That is my motion. Second. Okay, I, I have one question, uh, Director Lang. Um, in, in reference to the, um, the George Street, I know there was uh, you know, an agreement with the village of, of Vitasca, and it says there that they're not ready to do theirs in the near future. What do they mean by that? Uh, I can jump in real quick, City Manager here. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I, originally we had reached out to Vitasca and we had brokered a tentative deal um, awaiting a, a formal IGA, but in the interim, before we were able to pass the IGA, the COVID-19 crisis uh, came upon us and Itasca decided to cancel its road program for the next year, which essentially put that project on hold as we need to partner with them. Um, they decided not to do their capital plan next year. Okay, D didn't we do a uh... A, a project on Mill Road back in 2015 or 14, if I'm not mistaken? We, we did. That is correct. And didn't we bill them for it? Like, say, <clears throat> project, we can't bill them for it? or uh, they, they wanted to partner up, and they were uh, – it's kind of a longer story. It's probably better for, for another time, but needless to say, they're not moving forward with the capital plan this year. And it's probably better if we just delay until they're ready in the specific. Okay, instance. so can we send a letter to all those res res Wooddale residents on George Street? Because a few, uh, quite a few of them have been asking me about the problem. And, um, and of course, I told them it's going to happen this year. Now it's not going to happen. 
is there any way that the city can reach out to each individual residence on that street and explain to them why? Yeah, we can probably craft some sort of letter. I'll talk with Director Wang and we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get something together for sure. Thank, thank you. Go ahead. Any other questions? I have a question then. Go ahead. So are, are we awarding this contract then? Yes. Hello. This is Director Lang, Chairman, if I can recognize <clears throat> Yes. Yeah, so in place of George Street, are you questioning specifically for George Street, Alderman? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, George Street will not be included in uh, this fiscal year's capital project. It's going to be pushed off to a later year when Itasca is ready to, to partner with it. Uh, right. Instead, we've replaced George Street with Apollo Court and Roy Drive, and those will be included in this contract. Right. Was it the same price? Right. Yeah, it worked for as far as engineering costs were concerned, it worked out to the same. We simply replaced George Street with uh, Apollo and Roy. Uh, construction cost wise, it worked out pretty similar. Uh, also, we actually came in $80,000 under budget uh, from what we had originally planned in the CIP. I let me ask you this other question, if you don't mind, Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, Apollo and Roy Drive, where was that on the street study and what conditions were they in now that we're doing it that way? They were pretty bad. I, that ain't what I'm saying, Tony. Yeah, go ahead. Chairman, this is Director Lang, if I could be recognized. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Roy Drive on the most recent street study was a uh, two or one failed and okay. Apollo Court was a three very poor. Okay, I'm fine then. Okay. I'm just saying, if we're going by the street study and we're moving stuff around, we need play by the rules. And I'm sure we are. I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I got a question for Director Lane. Over at Apollo and Roy, I know we had like a water main break right around the corner, and we've had a few, I believe it's on Apollo, that speaks to me. Um, just out of curiosity, did we even look at that? <clears throat> this is Director Lang. Uh, we are aware of a, a number of breaks that occurred, especially on the intersection, the northwest intersection there. Uh, the water main is actually located in the parkway, so it's not a major concern for the road project. Uh, we have kind of focused in on possibly extending the sewer down Apollo Court to give the, the properties there the capability of connecting their sump pumps directly to the sewer line. Uh, that's an idea that we're tossing around that we may bring to the committee later on. Uh, I have a follow-up? Yes. Yes, Mayor. And basically, that was going to be my next question because uh, that's one of the areas the coldest back doesn't have any storm sewers. And when are we on our big stormwater project going to start redoing the sewer lines on these streets in that, in that end of town? Because I mean, if we're going to be there in two years, are we going to rip up the street that we're going to resurface right now? Are we looking at that? We absolutely are. I'm sorry, this is Director Lang. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Robin Lane was avoided under this uh, road resurfacing program, because there is some work planned in that area under the next phase of the stormwater project. So we wanted to avoid you know, uh, redoing the streets and then having to rip them up again for storm sewer work. So it's definitely on our radar. It's something that we take into consideration when planning which streets are going to get done. Can I, can I just follow up? Somebody? Yes, Mayor, go ahead. No. So my understanding is when we, we started the, the War 2-3 stormwater improvements, that um, all the streets. Hold on, Mayor. Is there somebody talking? I can barely hear you. Somebody's talking in the background somewhere. Would somebody else? Yeah, if you're not talking, can you put yourself on mute? Yes. <laughs> no, no, it's not me. I'm, I know that. I'm just hearing. Somebody's wife is talking. I somebody's hear Somebody's wife it's, or somebody is overtaking sunny. you. I think it's Sunny. <laughs> okay. There you go. So, that whole area, my understanding was we have. 10 and 12 inch pipes or whatever and into 18 and 24 or 30s in that in that whole area and that's i know we got probably gonna have about five phases by the time we're done are we considering that stuff because i really don't want to be ripping something up 
even if you know we're going to spend 150,000 and in, in uh, two years we're going to come in and put in this new storm sewer, it's kind of a waste. <laughs> Yes, we've coordinated our road program to uh, kind of work around the plan work for the Ward 23 stormwater project. So okay. We're... okay. Just want to Any make other sure. questions? If there's no other questions, can we have a roll call, please? Alderman Sorrentino. You're I'm muted, muted. Ben. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. Motion carries. Next is uh, items to consider at future meetings. We have uh, engineering standards in June. And we have the inflow infiltration, um, which is groundwater filtering into the city pipes, and that's coming in June as well. Um, any other um, items to consider? No. Nope. If there's none, um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. So move. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose, we are adjourned. Thank you. Okay. Uh... I'd like to call the Finance and Administration Committee to order. Let the minute so, taker reflect that the same members are present. Uh, first, I'd like to get a, a motion to approve the April 9th, 2020 so finance meetings. Do I have a second? Second. Are there any questions, corrections, changes? There is a correction. It says uh, we're going to charge them for 25,000 gallons of water. I think that should be 2,500, I believe. We're, uh, we're going to credit him for 2500 I think, right? Yeah, well, 25000 according to that, so I'm saying he's be All right, so we can we can make that correction from 25000 to 2500 Thank Any you. Any other corrections, changes? There being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That passes. Next, uh, before I get into the next four reports, I think that there was uh, one other that was supposed to be on this list and it didn't get on there. Maybe Mr. Mermis or Mr. Wilson, uh, the video gambling license fee waiver. I thought that was going to be one of the items that was on They're here. All together, Art. Huh? Art? Yes. So liquor licenses and video gaming should all be one thing. It should because the applications all go out together. So that's, honestly, that's one item. That should be one item. It should say liquor license and video game. You're correct, but we handle it as one item because they all go out at the same time. Well, they might go out at the same time, but there's no language to address that. So I just want to make yeah, sure that city we're manager. addressing both. City Manager Mermis, go ahead. Yeah, sure. The uh, Going to what the mayor said with the item three on finance, the liquor license fee waiver, since anybody that has a video gaming license needs to have a liquor license, that extra $25 would just be assumed part of the fee waiver. Um, we omitted that from the, uh, the item accidentally, but the $25 fee waiver does uh, join itself with the liquor fee waiver. So we can act on that tonight. It would just be lumped in the extra $25. Okay, just so that we, we've made mention of it and that uh, we got it. Okay, so I'll move on to the uh, uh, report and recommendation. The first is commercial occupancy certificate fee waiver. I'll make a motion to approve Second. that. Are there any questions? Hey, can you, can I, uh, how much, how much is that? Anyone know? Mr. Wilson, you want to take that? Mr. Uh, sure, yeah, I can take that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, so while each business has a uh, different fee, uh, depending on a few different factors, uh, the bottom of the memo that we did put in the annual revenue that we're collecting on this program is approximately $140,000. So while it does vary a little bit from business to business, the total impact uh, to the city would be around $140,000 for this particular uh, fee waiver program. Okay. Okay. Does that answer your question, Mr. Was Alderman Wesley? 
Yes, thank you. Okay. I have a question. Sure, Mayor, please go ahead. Uh, just so this is going to be for one year and being, are we starting, I don't know if everybody's paid paid up for April because of everything that happened or are we starting in in May if we collected so so we got a, a clean break point of where we start and stop because it'll be for one year for everybody pays at a different time with the COC. Is that, do we have that squared away? Probably a question for the staff, I guess. Mr. Marmus or Mr. Wilson, you want to take that? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so basically, I know there's the different zones of the city. Uh, so we will go back and look to make sure that whatever zone um, we stopped at would be where it would, the zone before that would be where it was applicable through. So just for argument's sake, say they got through February because the whole thing started falling apart in March. So if everybody through February had been taken care of, then this waiver would go through that group in February and then they would start getting the in March. Uh, if the people in March had already paid, then it would pick back up in April of next year. So uh, we'll work with CD to make sure we have the timing on it correct, but it's just this one year from whenever the last zone was paid for and completed, be it February or March, whichever one that is, that's when it will go uh, until for this particular program. Can I? Alderman Eugene Wesley. I, I'll be interrupt. I, I, I have an, one more question. So this is waiving the business license for the, the businesses that were not open? Everyone. For all businesses. All, Everybody. all, all businesses. So Everyone. that's Jewel and everything. Okay. Jewel, Target, yep. everything. Okay. That's all I want to know. Okay. So we have, are there any other questions? No. Okay. We have a oh, motion yeah. with. Go ahead. No question. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second uh, roll call. Alderman Sorrentino. Yes. Alderman Jacob. Yes. Alderman Woods. Yes. Alderman Sismarski. Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Yes. Alderman Catalano. Yes. Alderman Messina. Yes. That passes. Next, uh, small business. All business utility payment plan. Uh, Mr. Wilson, do you want to touch on this? How uh, this is uh, going to work? Yeah, sure. Um, so currently, uh, we do not uh, engage or um, really allow businesses to go on the payment plans for their utility bill. Uh, um, and we have received some phone calls from businesses in the last six weeks say that they're having some difficulty paying and they wanted to go on payment plans, uh, you know, due to downturn their business, uh, which is, is obviously a known quantity across the country at this point. Uh, and so just in an effort to not uh, be as burdensome to those businesses when they're trying to get their business back, trying to get their employees back with having to try and pay the entire utility bill right out of the box, um, we're looking to offer a payment plan to them similar to what we would offer a resident, uh, just to kind of help them move back into uh, normalcy, whatever that's going to be once they reopen. Uh, so again, we're just trying to extend the same um, courtesy and program to the businesses that we would offer a resident, which we currently do not do as a, uh, a standard operating practice. Right. No, I think that's a great idea, especially uh, for the closed businesses, even though they're not pumping water, they get bills and uh, the ones that are marginally getting by are still pumping water through it. So I think it's a good idea with all the things uh, going on. Do we have any other questions or concerns? Um, I, I had one question. Peter, uh, Alderman Jacob. Uh, in the memo, it says, uh, that this is not going to happen till phase three and four before you guys do this. So do we need to change the motion on it? Uh, to, to, your, uh, to your question or, or concern, and I touched base on this with uh, Director Wilson, 
Uh, I think that the, the, he was using the governor's plan as a target of when and how this kicks in. I, I think it should kick in like now because people are hurting now. Right. And I, I, I think to the point that it was going to end at some point, I, w I personally would rather have a, a date. So whether we use six months or, or eight months, and, and maybe Mr. Wilson wants to address this a little more, I'd rather have a time frame because everybody knows when it starts and when it ends, as opposed to referencing an ambiguous, nebulous guide put out by a, a third party, if you will. Mr. Wilson? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, so um, I certainly understand where, where some of the, the, the question on this lies. So our payment plan currently um, revolve around, you have to pay your current bill plus um, a portion of what's past the rest of the plan. So just for the ease of math, say you have a thousand dollars that's past due and your normal bill is two hundred dollars a month. You would say, okay, you have to pay your current bill for you know a hundred dollars a month. So it takes you ten months to get caught up on that payment plan. Right. So while we're not starting penalties and doing the disconnection process right now, um, for us to do a payment plan, if the business isn't open and they can't pay their bill this month, they probably can't pay it next month because they're still not open. So the payment plan is self-defeating at this point. So we're not, that's why we're not going to enter into any payment plans until we begin charging uh, late fees again and start doing the uh, delinquent notices uh, and the disconnects, which we're not going to do until more businesses reopen and again, there's some normalcy. That's why we kind of put the phase three and four in there. Uh, so we felt that trying to do that right now, we're not charging penalties, everything is still shut down. Again, the payment plan doesn't work right now with how uh, things are operating. So really, I mean, yeah, if we want to take out three and four and say, you know, within the next six months, you know, once they open back up, that's fine. Um, but until the business is open back up, it doesn't make any sense the way our payment plans are constructed to enter into a payment plan with them. So, as we're trying to come up with some language to give us some time for these businesses to open back up to get back up onto their feet mm -hmm. the payment plan. If we don't want to say six months and if the business is open for seven, then they're outside of the box. So, I mean, I'm fine with the time frame, but that's kind of why we use the more nebulous. Uh, third party language in this particular can, case. Can I jump in real quick, city manager? Yeah, manager Mermis, go ahead. Yeah, sure, just to reiterate what Director Wilson was talking about, we really kind of tried to, to organize this the best we could. And, and like he said, the thought process was immediately right away we realized there would be a problem with businesses, particularly small businesses with COVID-19. And that was before we even started kind of fielding those calls from the businesses. So we had already administratively started, obviously, waiving water shutoffs, waiving the accumulation of late fees. But we, what we did not have the ability to do was work out payment plans with businesses. As Director Wilson had said, we had historically only done that with residents. So we thought this would be a nice program with the times for the businesses. The reason why we chose phase three and four to start the payment plan is because if we picked an arbitrary date, as you know, Governor Pritzker, Pritzker tends to extend things. Now he's got the uh, reopen Illinois plan and those plans aren't, uh, there's no date involved. It's based upon quantifiable data with COVID-19 testing results and whatnot. So the thought was we do the phases because then we know that the businesses are linked in his restore Illinois plan. So essentially the plan is already starting from a Wooddale perspective with businesses, and we're currently not charging them those fees and not shutting off their water, but we don't have the ability to finalize the payment plan with them until after their business is open. Um, so that's why we put phase three or phase four, um, because they're simply not open and we just don't have the information to start their plan, but we have essentially already started a plan, if that makes sense. I, I believe it does, but if I'm confusing somebody, let me know, but we have started. This is just kind of the closure of that process then once we get to that point and restore Illinois. Right, and, and, and I get that and I understand, you know, the, the, the logic behind that, but it's 
still, you know, uh, nebulous and ambiguous, that, that time frame of, and then what does open mean? Because I could choose to open and not choose to open. Uh, that's why I like a, a time frame because there's a couple things that play in that. And if we set it six months, right? And, and, it, and it had to go to eight, I'm sure it's easy enough to come back and the council would go, yeah, we see that everything's going bad and we'll extend it another two months. I, I just always like that there isn't any debate over when things are open or they're not open. And right now we live in a world where nobody really knows what's going on from day to day. So any stability we can give to any program, i.e. a specific start date or specific end date, to me just adds a little clarity, a little light to a really dark, muddy uh, situation that we're in. That, that's my point of view. I mean, we, we're gonna vote on it and we can agree or disagree. I, I would prefer to see it as, as a date and that date can always be extended and I would make it the longest date everybody's agreeable to. If that's six months, it's six months. If it's nine months, it's nine months. I've got a question or a comment actually. Sure, Mayor, please go ahead. Right, when the businesses start opening, I mean, there's talk of this 25%, then maybe go to 50, maybe go to 75. I mean, this could be this could be a long process. So, I mean, five or six months to start, you can always push it back if you have to. All right, like I said, we can start with six months, we can start with, with, with nine months. I think that we all understand that this is this is gonna be a long road and, and to the mayor's point, when these people open, they're gonna open at 25%. Anybody that studied any business understands if you're only operating at 20% of capacity, you're not making any money, right? So it, it's gonna take a while even after they open, which is why I don't like the, the language, the word may open. May I come in? Sure, Alderman uh, Wesley, uh, Eugene Wesley. I, I agree with you on that. I would probably go with nine months. And let me ask you this question. Are we notifying the businesses or how are we doing that? Or are they have to call us? Uh, Manager Marmus, you want to take that or Mr. Wilson? Yeah, I, I, can, I can take it. If, uh, Mr. Marmus has another comment, that's fine. Um, you know, typically the payment plans are, um, voluntary is not the right word, but yeah, we don't typically reach out to people and offer them. If they call us and express that they're having uh, difficulty paying their bill, then we do what we can to assist them. Okay. Um, so our initial uh, um, thought would be that this would be the same type of thing. Um, but I mean, if, if there's, you know, we to take a different approach, we can, but you know, we, we're trying also not to give a payment plan to somebody that's been paying their bill and cleans up, and now they can kind of take a break. So that's why we, we kind of do it as a, uh, you know, if they reach out, then we work with them as a case. Right. So, so this is em this is empowering staff to make the plan, not just spreading the word that there is a plan. Right. If somebody calls up and they are in trouble, some people probably can pay the bill, and 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 don't want to push it down the road and other people might be, you know, hurting. So you look at the businesses that are open, some are functioning at 20%, 30%, 40%, 80% <clears throat> or, or more. So, yeah. Oh, I, I'm good with another comment. Okay. So, so I, I, I think the, uh, do we, do we have a motion on the floor? We do not yet. Okay. So Alderman Wesley is the motion to, approve and uh, change the language to instead of the uh, phase three phase four to nine, nine months. months yes that's my motion okay do we have a second second okay are there any other questions i i do mayor please so brad this is basically geared to those that have been shut down and whatnot what happens with the companies that have been open at full force. Are they going to be allowed to sit on not paying for nine months? Uh, so I think I think that this goes to the point that staff brought up that they're not going to broadcast this. That we're we're just giving them the ability or flexibility to work with businesses that are hurting. Correct. Right? Well, how do you establish that? Well, first they would have to call up and say that I'm hurting. 
right? That I can't pay the bill. And we kind of know what businesses are open or not right. open, yeah. right? So right. I'm not envisioning the jewel. I get that that would be a concern that the jewel all of a sudden wants to not pay their water and say they're, they're hurting. But, you know, at a certain right. point, I got to leave some of that up to staff to navigate that conversation and uh, deal with that. This is Alderman Messina. Can I be heard? Go ahead, Alderman Messina. Can we set some criteria so that we can establish hardship or so that they have to establish hardship? <laughs> yeah, uh, Director uh, Wilson, do you want to address that or Manager Mermis, either one? Is good question. Yeah, um, so purposefully, there's not a lot of documentation on um payment plans right now on the residential side because uh, we do evaluate each one on a case-by-case -case basis um you know so i think you know we kind of have a, a pretty good feel of what businesses are open which ones aren't uh, and we would look at the the usage history as well um see so, yeah, i mean if, if somebody normally uses twenty thousand gallons and they've been at two thousand for the last four months okay that makes sense They've been they've been shut down, um, and so that would kind of uh, prove out some hardship. Uh, if you have somebody who, um, you know, go next door to Jewel, you know, go to Target, they've used fifty thousand gallons all the way through with the full parking lot. I think it's going to be a little bit harder for them to to prove that out, uh, given water usage. So we'll probably base it a lot on the consumption patterns uh, on a year over to year basis, and then over the past few months. To see if their consumptions drop significantly um, to prove that they've been closed from a hardship standpoint. Um, short of that, I'm not sure. Aside from getting, you know, sales reports or something, how we would prove hardship in that case, and then how amenable the businesses would be to give that information up. But if that's something the council wants us to, to kind of dive into, we certainly could. Um, but right now, we kind Can of have a problem. Sure, go ahead, Alderman Messina. Is that, I know there, it sounds like there's some criteria. It sounds like it's subjective. Is there a process or a checks and balance that either is in place or we can incorporate? Mr. Wilson? Yeah, so um, I mean, you are correct, uh, Alderman Messina, that, that it is a little bit of a subjective review on the part of staff. Um, there is every payment plan though um, does have to sign an agreement um, that they've had some hardship and that they agree to the terms of the payment plan itself, you know, via current bill plus however much per month. Um, so we could, you know, if we wanted to include the hardship language in that agreement, or like I said, we could uh, take it a step further and try to get some, you know, the county for uh, their property tax saying they have a hardship. Um, documents right. and we're working on or something like that. So we, we could we could uh, look to do something like that. We have a little bit of time before this would kick off anyway. So if we want to do that, one kind of a job, we could we could look into that for sure. One final follow up. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, it's kind of where I got the idea. Um, I saw yeah, if we could kind of mirror what the county's doing with that hardship, that might give us some ideas. That would be appreciated. Yeah, okay. certainly we can we can uh, look into that for sure. Okay, so we can you can look in that and bring that when it comes to the council meeting, right? Uh, city manager here, I was going to chime in. Sure, uh, Mr. Murmus. Yeah, for actually for the three finance and admin committee items that were on the docket tonight, uh, for not only just direction purpose but for expediency. There really, we did not feel that there was a need for uh, council approval. Typically on these type of things, we go with the committee direction. It's not like we're passing an ordinance for this. Um, so okay. we were planning on actually just getting council direction and then implementing. And we certainly could develop the hardship form and I could distribute that to you though. Okay, is, uh, Alderman Messina, is that okay? Cause I know that you, you've got yeah. some concerns. Okay. Yeah, it would be great. Appreciate All right, it. So yeah, you're, Jeff, you're going to put something together and then uh, email it 
the correct the correct i just didn't want i just didn't want to leave okay. you hanging if you don't see it on the council agenda next week we're going to implement it but you'll get you'll get the form okay so we have we have a motion and we have a second are there any other questions yeah I'll, this is on a case-by-case -case basis right i mean if they don't come in they don't come in we're not sitting there telling everyone to come in right correct correct we're not going to broadcast the program right. all right all right okay roll call Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Wood? Yes. Alderman Sosmarski? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. That passes. Uh, ne next is liquor license and uh, video gaming fee waiver because they're connected. So I'm going to add the language. Uh, in, in this, I, I wanted to make a comment that we were uh, carving out some of the licenses uh, specific uh, categories. Uh, and for some reason, I can't open my thing up right now. So um, I would prefer to see the language that everybody's equal. I understand the reasoning behind kind of carving out a few people, but I personally don't like to be the guy that picks the winners and losers. And then we get into the uh, people that are marginally running and going, you're charging me and that business is open. That's really their function, a carry out business. So they're really operating at 80%. I'm only operating at 40%, you know, and, and compared to other stores. So mm -hmm. I personally would like to see if we're going to waive these fees that we waive them for everybody uh, across the board and, and make it even just like we're making everything else even. Uh, I'll okay. second your motion if that's your motion. That is my motion. Then I second we we do uh, forego all licenses for liquor and gaming we, for all, we, all establishments. All renewal licenses. All right, correct. All, all renewal licenses correct. for the all liquor renewal. and the uh, uh, video gaming. So, can I make a comment? Sure. Alderman Messina? No, it was Catalan. Yeah, I, I had, well, I had my hand raised, but I actually had a clap. I was trying to raise my hand. Uh, I, I saw your hand, Nutty. So, I. Okay. So, uh, so a good comment. go Alderman ahead, Alderman Jake. Jacob. Yeah, go ahead, Alderman Jacob. Yeah, and, and I would agree with the Alderman Art Woods. Uh, you know, some of these ones, the some of the ones that we were going to keep the license fee still going. I mean, the Jewels, the Target, uh, Franks. I mean, you know, they had a lot to put out a lot of unnecessary money that they weren't expected to. Hand sanitizer, overtime, uh, had to come have somebody come and do professional cleaning and sanitizing. They're out a lot of money that they would never have uh, anticipated to be out, and I don't think they made up for that all those uh, costs. Right. That that that's a good point. That's what I say is when when we get into start choosing and picking, then we get into the the arguments of you know well that guy had to do this and I I only could do this and he sold more than I sold. You know the the mini mart gas station is hurt more than the the carry out pizza place or, or order pizza place. And I don't, I don't want to be the guy that I don't mind setting policy, but I don't want to pick and choose who the winners are. That's my thought process. Can I be there. recognized, Alderman? Sure. Uh, Alderman Catalano. Yeah, this is uh, directed to uh, uh, Director Wilson. I mean, how, how much are we talking about as far as uh, money-wise? 65000 On the ones that uh, we Every, all. Every. all. Director Wilson, if we separate out the separate the ones that were carved out, I think right. when we talked earlier, that number was seventeen five. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hey, may I ask a question? Alderman Eugene Wesley, go ahead. So tonight, we are putting another liquor license tonight. A no. new one. No. That's a new one. That's a new one. That's not a renewal. That's different. Okay, so we we're going to charge them the right. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah, correct. Okay, so we have a, a motion and second. If there's no other questions, roll call. 
Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sosmarski? Yes. Alderman Eugene Musley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. That passes. Next is uh, dial a ride fee waiver. Mr. Wilson, do you want to touch on this or? Um, yeah, just real briefly, you know, um, we still have, as you can see, the ridership numbers have gone down dramatically um, since, since this, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has really started in mid-March. Uh, and in talking to uh, Director Lang and uh, Mr. Hastings, the, the predominance of ridership are elderly going to required medical uh, appointments and then also some of them going to the grocery store. Uh, both of those seem like uh, things that, you know, one would need to do normally, but especially during this time, there's a heightened risk associated with any of that. Um, we thought for that, that class of people, for anybody really, but really for that class of people, it's just more that are doing it to waive the fees. Um, I know, again, uh, Alderman Wood, to put in here until phase four, but if we need to make it, you know, six months or whatever, that, that's fine. Um, just, you know, like I said, they're, they're a higher risk category to go out in the first place, um, but it is necessities that they're going out for. So we thought it would be something um, nice for them to not charge them to, to go on those trips. Yeah, I, I, I certainly think it's a good idea. And especially I'll make a motion and proof. Second. How many okay. months? And, and should we, on the, to the motioner and the seconder, uh, just to be consistent, can we keep the language instead of going with the phase three, phase four, and just do the nine months? Nine months and we'll revisit it. Okay. Does the seconder agree? Did he say nine months? Yes. I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. I agree. And then we'll just revisit it. Yeah, yeah, ex right. exact, exactly. So uh, are there any other questions on, on the dial right? Yeah, I have a question. Alderman Jacob, mm. go ahead. This is a, kind of unrelated to what we're talking about, but it's with the dial a ride. I know we sanitized all our vehicles. Was this vehicle was included in that, that uh, uh, Mr. Mermis? Yeah, I can, I can jump in real quick. Go ahead, Mr. Mermis. Yeah, we, all, all city vehicles were included in the program. We've done that twice now. Additionally, the dial -a ride actually has um, probably the most extensive cleaning protocols just because of the, demogra the demographic that uses the van. Um, that's probably the cleanest van in the whole city of Wooddale. Um, so yes, it has actually extra cleanings uh, for the dial -a ride van. Nice. Can we, Mr. Okay, Marmus, can we put out something up a piece, whether it's on Facebook or, or whatever, addressing that, because I'm sure that, especially for seniors, that that's a big concern to kind of remove or alleviate some of that fear of getting into the vehicle. Uh, certainly, we can, we, we can try to craft something. I, I, I want to just caution everyone, though, it's not like we want to necessarily promote seniors driving around unless they, you know, they have to, they absolutely have to. So we've been trying to kind of balance knowing, you know, letting people know it's available, but not necessarily trying to promote them to drive somewhere. So it's kind of a right. fine yeah. line. I, I, I get that, but just in the promotion of that it's there, add the cleaning. I'm not saying try to get more people out of the house. For sure, for sure. Right, for just, sure. just that for those people who do, and, and again, uh, as we've said, and we know that a lot of people use this to go to the doctor, and we also know today, that a lot of people that should be going to the doctor aren't going to the doctor, which is not a good thing. So again, I'm not trying to get more people out of the house than need to be out of the house. I'm just trying to alleviate maybe some potential fear that they would have getting in that van and, and maybe some comfort knowing that we clean it every day, you know. So we have a, a motion, a second, if there's no other questions, uh, roll call. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. 
Alderman Messina. Yeah. That passes. Uh, that's the end of my report. I'll make a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We're adjourned. Public Health, Safety, Judiciary, and Ethics Committee uh, call to order. Uh, let the minute taker note that all attendees are the same as previously noted. Uh, I need a uh, motion for an approval of minutes of our meeting on March so 12, 2020. Second. Public Health, Safety, Second. Judiciary. Okay. Any questions? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed is an aye. All right, report and recommendation. I make uh, the motion of approval of the liquor license. Second. Okay. Who's this for? Roll call, please. Wait, what? It is for the pro. white 7 Eleven on Irving and uh, Woodale Road, Addison Road. Uh, Any questions? It's an ordinance amending Chapter 5, Article 3, Section 5.305 of the Municipal Code of the City of Woodale to increase the number of class GS liquor licenses authorized for issuance, specifically the 7-Eleven at Wooddale Road and Irving Park Road. We have That's a motion, wonderful. we have a second. Any other questions? I'm sorry, Addison Road. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, Addison and Irving. Uh, no other questions, we'll have a roll call. Alderman Sorrentino? Yes. Alderman Jacob? Yes. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Sismarski? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Catalano? Yes. Alderman Messina? Yes. And that's looking good. Uh, any items to be considered at future meetings, gentlemen? Don't you have one? What was that? Don't you have one? Uh, now I do it. Yeah, it's future okay, meeting. public health and safety at a future meeting. I want to uh, discuss the uh, DuPage County Senior Citizens Council request for uh, funding. <clears throat> All right, if there's there nothing funding. else, Wait. pardon me. There was a letter issued on April 2nd. You guys want to maybe find it, read it. There's some enclosures in there. Uh, we're looking at about 8,000. No future uh, considerations. I'll make a motion to adjourn this meeting. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned, gentlemen. Stay well, stay safe. Ciao for now. Have Ciao a good day. Have a good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Be well. Okay. Anybody giving out free haircuts? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs>